So I feel like I'm on a little bit of a roll this week making the videos for you guys. So uh, I wanted to keep the trend going. However, today I just wanted to do a back to bones Lightroom lesson tutorial, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is how I would edit and deliver a sneak peek to my clients. So before we get into this, I just want to touch on a couple of things and just the way I do a sneak peek in general. So generally speaking, uh, when I'm leaving the wedding, I'll always go up to them and say goodbye and give them a hug and, and say thanks for having me on the day. And right then I'll tell them, I'll give you guys a sneak peek in a few days, so watch out for that, you'll hear from me soon. Just so they know I'm not leaving and they're not gonna hear from me for a month or whatever until they get their photos. You know, usually I wanna do it really quick, so I'll say a couple of days, uh, just to give me leeway in case I get really, really busy, but generally I'll do it the next morning, um, you know, after their wedding so that they can have something as soon as they wake up freshly married, and it's just a really cool kind of feature that you can give to your clients. In terms of how many photos you want to deliver and how you want to do it, that is totally up to you. Uh, I have asked for feedback a lot from clients in the past, and I did notice that when I got real carried away in the past and I would deliver like 120 photos for the sneak peek, uh, it didn't really ruin the delivering of the entire gallery but it did kind of take some of the magic out of it because they had seen so many already but personally I deliver between you know 30 to 50 I try and keep it under 50 and a lot of people are going to say that's way too much as well uh, you know a lot of photographers just do five or ten and that's totally fine there's no rule around it like I said you do whatever you want to do for your clients so with that being said let's just jump straight into it uh, I would usually use a loop deck to edit uh, I've done a video on that already you can see that in the description uh, but today I'm just using my MacBook this is a 20 20 I think or 2019 uh, MacBook like the last 16 inch one they made before they went to the new M1 chips. Once we've edited these photos I'll show you how I export and if you're interested I am editing off an external drive I have this Samsung uh, it's a T7 drive just labeled with current work and I have another label on there uh, telling me when I formatted it. Uh, I like to keep my stuff fresh and if I've had a hard drive for a really long time uh, I will you know put it to the side and buy another one for that season uh, usually one a year does me fine but um, yeah this is a two terabyte external SSD so jumping into Lightroom let's get into it um, like I said I've gone through and I've already selected a kind of range just you know uh, just random moments through the day. It didn't take me long. I didn't spend a whole lot of time selecting these photos. It was just a few hours as I was going through making sure all the images are uh, imported correctly that I picked out and just to tell an overall story of the day. So I've already done that and uh, let's just jump straight in and I'm going to use my presets here so you guys can download these in the description if that's something you want to do. But generally, I'll, I'll try a few presets on some of the images because, you know, I do find if I'm shooting up here in Auckland, it is a little bit different to shooting down in Queenstown in the South Island, for example. And, you know, generally I'll use the CTM3 Universal preset here. But a lot of the times the harsh sunlight one works really well and the muted split one I use a lot for a real moody, like a dark sunset when it's really cloudy or something like that. It works quite well for that. Uh, but this one, I am going to go ahead and use the CTM3 Universal one, and I'll just click that, apply it, and it is mostly one click, apart from images like this that need a little bit of highlights or shadows pulled back, and it definitely needs to be straightened out because I didn't take the time doing it when I was taking the photo. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, first, let's straighten it out, and I'll press Shift-T to bring up the upright tool, and I'll just click on this the roof here. And then I'll choose another straight line, maybe this weatherboard, like that, that, and I'll call that good for this video. Uh, you can see in the corner here all my settings uh, and the lens I was using and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's just bring down the highlights a bit and we'll bring up the shadows about there. That's cool. I just wanted to do a dress shot and I thought I would just include the girls in it and get them to hold their dresses up at the same time. Uh, real off the cuff, it wasn't like a real organized shot or anything like that. So uh, I'm going to call that about good there. Moving on to the next one. Oh, hang on a minute. Let's rewind a bit. First, what I would do before doing anything else is to choose my preset, 
So we'll go to this one, we'll click CTM Universal again, and bam, that's pretty much done. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go and choose all of them, shift click, and I'm gonna sync that preset with uh, shift command S, and uh, make sure all of these, you can pause it if you wanna know what I'm doing, but uh, sync, and then that's pretty much it. So now we're just gonna go through and do the little adjustments. I shouldn't need to use any other preset or anything like that unless I'm doing a black and white. Moving on to this one, just a nice shot of the girls uh, having a wine. And I did tell them um, I thought it would be a good idea because they were all inside getting their makeup done and all that. But at this point in time, mum was getting her makeup done inside and I just suggested to the girls, why don't we go out and sit on the veranda and have a glass of champagne. I'll get a few photos of you girls hanging out. So all they did is went and sat down and then I just move around them getting a bunch of photos. So there's a whole bunch of different compositions from this scene, but uh, that's how the scene played out. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I have the histogram closed, also another tip, uh, you can leave that open if you want to, uh, but I do find it, it slows Lightroom down having that open. Moving on, so we've synced the preset, uh, as you can see this one's just a bit underexposed, so I'm just going to bring that up using the plus key, and that's pretty good to be honest, I'm pretty happy with that, I'm just going to raise my brightness up a touch, I'm just going to crop that in because I don't want that kind of... Her, her face here, I just want the mirror. Um, so yeah, go full screen, see what that looks like. The computer is definitely slow when it uh, is recording the screen at the same time. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And this was just an off the cuff shot. Um, they were just about to put the veil in her hair. So I picked up my 85, just shot this in the mirror. Um, there's no explaining to do really. I don't know why I'm trying to do that. Uh, this was another one just off the cuff. Um, this is the groom, Duncan, and he's just chatting to his boys who are off in the corner there. So I just snapped a photo of him. He wasn't a real serious guy, but he definitely wasn't your, your kind of real smiley, uh, you know, a real happy guy, but he didn't show it a lot in his expressions through the day. So I just saw him cracking up at his boys. So I just quickly whipped out my 24 mil off the hip and uh, hit the eye focus and snapped a shot. This one, I kind of missed it. Um, I, I wanted to get a shot of the bride walking through that hot spot and you know I'm, I'm quite underexposed in camera just so I wouldn't blow the face out uh, you know when they walk into the shot and I think I don't think it is yeah so I can fully recover all that but by the time she walked through this person here with the cell phone um, walked in front of me and I couldn't get the shot because of who was standing next to me so that was kind of a pain guys remind your guests if you're getting married I mean you're probably not watching this if you're getting married but if you are, tell them to just put their phones down. It really doesn't help the situation for us, and they pay us a lot of money to be there. So you can see what I'm going for. I want that kind of dark look, and yeah, I'm going to call that pretty good. There's a little bit of chromatic aberration on there, but we can fix that at a later date. Um, and I'm just going to warm it up just a touch. Good. I am using auto white balance through most of the day as well. That's pretty sweet. I'm happy with that. Uh, with the first kiss photo, this is something I do a lot. I have my second shooter, you can't see her, but she's behind the couple, uh, you know, shooting them from the other angle. And I really like to get that shot with all the people reacting in the background. And I do get one like this, and then I get another one focused on them with them slightly out of focus. So you kind of get both perspectives. It's just something I like to do, and the couple seem to really like it. Uh, that one is looking a little bit green, so I'm going to just warm, uh, change that tint a little bit. It was a real green kind of area here in this forest. It's a little bit difficult as well because I have this um, light on me for you guys with the video. So uh, yeah, but I think that's pretty good. I do have grain added in this preset as well. But yeah, real happy with that. Moving on. This one, I really wanted that kind of flare, but I knew I would have to change it a little bit in post, so that's why I added this photo. I'm gonna try um, auto white balance as well, so shift command U, and it didn't really do much, but we'll warm it up a little bit more for effect. And then I'm gonna use the dehaze tool just to add some contrast back from that flare. And maybe lower it down a touch. And I don't like that there off center, so we'll do that. 
the ceremony was a bit of a challenge because the grass was on a lean and you know that where they were married there you can see these posts are kind of on angle and it made it a little bit difficult and there is a little bit of a lens flare there so I can press the Q button I wouldn't usually do this in Photoshop and, and Lightroom sorry because it's not going to work real well um, that Q tool sucks but yeah that's good enough for the demonstrations of this video. But yeah, you can see the 24mm flares really nicely. It just gives you a real kind of nice uh, natural flare to it. So I, I like that. Moving on. Uh, and as you can see again, these are just the preset straight out. So if I reset this, um, that's straight out of the camera. And we just go universal. Done. Uh, I haven't changed anything else. So bring those highlights down. And I'm off center again, man. What's wrong with me? Probably doesn't matter too much. Maybe just get that girl in the corner there and go up a bit to get that, you know, that flower there. Cool, yeah, happy with that. Moving on. Uh, the standard kind of group photo. This one was with my Tamron 17 to 28. Uh, with the group photo, I put it in manual focus and I focus on the on the people in front, like the couple. And, uh, and then I just shoot heaps of photos to make sure they're all in focus. And uh, this lens is super sharp as well. So yeah, sharp all the way through. Really good lens that Tamron. I'm gonna say that one's pretty much done. I just lowered the highlights a little bit. And I always add a photo of the groups just with both families. So this is both sides of the family. Uh, you know, the main, you know, just immediate family. So I like to add that in there. And I'm going to bring those highlights down a little bit. You can see just in the corner here, bringing that blue sky back. So if I go back up, you can see it makes a lot of difference. And then we'll brighten it up a touch. I'm going to call that good. Yeah. I am struggling a bit with the screen with the uh, light in my eyes. So you have to excuse me if the white balance isn't exactly right. And because the next shot is exactly the same, uh, and I use the same lens and everything, I'm just going to Command C, copy the exposure, white balance, and then Command V to paste it on that shot. And then that's pretty much done. The reason I included this one, actually, I will straighten it a little bit. The reason I include this one is because the bride was really close with this couple and this baby, so uh, I just wanted to throw that in there. This one, love these shots. Just adjust that tint. The key, the shift T again to get that straighten tool out. This shot I did stand a bit further back because I knew I would have to straighten this out and it would crop the image, and I didn't want to have to crop the sides off. Um, so now that's straight, I can just bring that in and make sure it's centered like so. And that's pretty much what I would do with that shot. Uh, this one, this is like a little pony. The bride loved ponies and horses and there was heaps of them in here and they were really loving this little, I think it was like a Shetland pony or something. So I thought I'd add that in there just for something funny. And then a shot of all the girls together. It's a bit warm now. Bring the highlights down again. Yep, cool, happy with that one. I could go ahead and fix the vignetting a little bit more. Um, yeah, and maybe straighten it a touch. Yeah, that's better. See, and I really don't like, I love things being centered. It's just me again, not right or wrong, it's just how I do things. So this next one, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the settings to it because it is a different lens, but it should be pretty much the same. Color changes a little bit with lens, I find. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm happy with that. You can see the tint has changed a little bit. That does happen when you go between different lenses. I find the, the color of the lens changes the color of the photo a lot more than the actual sensor of the camera does. Uh, this one, the boys wanted a photo of the socks, so I did get a photo with the socks. It was quite a funny story. They only had three pairs, so one of the guys was left out on the corner there. So I wanted to get a cool photo, and then I got the horse in the background between their legs. So I got one of them in focus and one uh, out of focus. But uh, yeah, I just chucked that in because it's kind of funny. 
using the plus and minus keys to change the exposure again. And then that's pretty much it. Another one, uh, let's try the auto white balance again. It's not too bad. A little bit more tint. Bring that sky back down. See, that's a big, you know, when you look at a photo like this, it's not technically blowing out, but when you bring it down, it's a big difference to the overall aesthetic of the photo. And it really just depends on the scene and where you are. You know, sometimes you can't do that. But um, I will err on the, on, on the side of caution and underexpose in camera so I can bring it up. Because I know I can bring it up further than I can bring the skies down. Uh, something to remember there. This one, uh, this was straight out of the camera pretty much. So let me reset that. This is the scene. Uh, we just went into this kind of field area. And then I set them up where I wanted them and just moved them around until I got their faces uh, where I wanted it for the uh, composition. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know, I just like the kind of look of it. Let me just warm it up a little bit. Yeah, about there. Looks a little bit green. Oh, that's why. Yeah, cool. Could even bring the shadows up and bring it down, but it kind of goes against the purpose. But it's just a creative shot. Again, you don't have to go by any rules or anything. Uh, but that's what I was planning with this shot. Moving on to the reception, I just got one uh, with you know her toasting her dad, just so they know kind of what they're going to expect with the uh, reception photos. Tears in the eyes, beautiful photo. They are such a beautiful couple. And yeah, that 85mm Sigma is obviously really, really sharp as well. Uh, then I got a photo in this old classic car out in the driveway just before we went off for sunset photos. Um, we'd kind of missed sunset a little bit, but uh, you know, we just got that nice afterglow light, which was cool. And yeah, focus, I've got their focus on, their, uh, on them, so that's cool. I like that, I'm gonna leave that. Again, straight out of the camera, let me just reset that. There we go, so that's straight out of the camera. And you can see that's at f1.4, and that's super, super sharp on them. Um, so go ahead, universal. Does desaturate it a little bit for this scene, so we can bring that back up. Add some warmth to it. In this scene as well, you could use the um, gradual filter tool and just add some color back in that way and maybe a little bit of warmth so I hold shift and just pull down like that add a little bit of tint have a play around you don't want to go too crazy with it just leave it at that so if we go before and after there we go so it's not a massive difference but it does make a difference to the final product yeah happy with that next I uh, just got this cool silhouette again with the horses. I hope you guys can't pick up the fan on the MacBook. It's freaking out a little bit. That would make a cool black and white, actually. Yeah, that's better. Let's go with that. And just straight into some dancing photos. So we didn't have a lot of room, but, um, you know, we, we work with what we've got. And this photo, I was using flash and I just had it pointed up at the ceiling, kind of behind me a little bit, and that, that worked really well. I, had, I didn't want to give away too much with the first dance photo, so I just delivered a couple there. Yeah, cool. And then I just got into some kind of party photos. Auto white balance. It's a little bit green and... I find auto white balance sucks in Lightroom most of the time. And make that one black and white as well. Nah, going back. Okay, carrying on. More <laughs> dance photos. This is one of the aunties and their friend. Um, just a funny photo. I do like these ones. And then these ones, I'm dragging the shutter. <laughs> oh, I love that one. It's quite funny. Real cool crowd. 
a little bit blown out in the face there. You can see my settings there. I get asked a lot about um, dragging the shutter photos on the dance floor. So this is what I always default to, half a second, F9, ISO 400, and then I'm just wide open at 17 mil, and I set my camera to manual focus and then set it to one meter, because uh, that scale comes up on the bottom of the screen when you set it to manual focus. So I just set it to one meter and then fire away, and that does me for all of the dance photos. Another cool one there. Like I said, you know, the presets are really good. So if I reset that again, that's straight out of the camera, so it doesn't really need much. And then universal. I'll try my dance floor one. I haven't used that in quite a while. So that one's a little bit different. Man, I haven't used that preset in a long time. But that's what I made it for. So, you know, either way, that's the dance floor one and then universal. Yeah, I kind of like that one better now. But, you know... Each individual wedding is going to be a little bit different. And that's pretty much it, guys. So that is how I would edit a sneak peek. Now I'm just going to really quickly touch on, I can see I'm almost at 30 minutes for this video. I'm going to cut as much as I can out to shorten it down for you. Uh, but now what I would do is um, highlight all of the photos. Um, Command, Shift, E, Export. And I have a preset here that says Full Export. And uh, it goes into another folder called Lightroom Exports. I will put that into the uh, name of the couple, so Amy and Duncan, and then I'll copy that, rename, and I'll just add highlight after that. Um, so that's going to be the file name. Uh, then down to settings, I have this uh, quality set at 75%, and I'm exporting, actually this is old, I export at 6,000 pixels on the long edge, uh, and 300 PPI, or DPI either way. Yeah, I mean, that's my personal preference. And then hey, export. And then you're done. So that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to cut this video down as much as possible so you don't have to kind of wade through everything. Um, but yeah, it's really not a complicated process. The key for me is just getting it to them the next day if possible, as early as possible. So when they wake up, they have like a bunch of epic photos. Uh, this one has 27 images in it. Just a bunch of epic photos that they can wake up and, and really relive the day a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's how I do it guys. Really appreciate you following along and I'll see you in the next video.